Without the king, goblins need their own hero. Not long shank or half shank. Their own. Like me. That's great, Knock Knock. Keep it up. Maybe someday you'll grow some spine instead of warts. <laughs> Pathetic. After the fall of the king, the whole tribe should have been gone. Like the last breath of life, leaving a corpse's lungs. Yet goblins tend to defy universal laws. Mother of monsters doesn't give voice to simple critters. Gives fangs. Gives talons. Gives extra limbs. But not voice. I'm afraid that the bird we met is a herald of another kind of evil. Perhaps Saren Ray herself sends me this ominous premonition as a warning. If you mean that raven, then the source of its capabilities could be not the goddess, but any spellbinder. I hope we won't have to deal with another follower of Lamashtu. You mean that winged rat in Varnhold? <laughs> Just forget it. Should have kicked the life out of it when we had a chance. That female back at the barbarian camp. Strange. Smells funny. Walks funny. As if broken. I... well, it's strange to say, but I agree. When I stood next to her, I got goosebumps all over. I didn't like that witch either. I don't care what she smells like, but I don't trust those who hide their faces. Broken. Hmm, that's an interesting notion from a degenerate pet like you. I wonder how close to the truth that is. We shan't go to Vordekai. It's a trap. I knew it right away. Um, I thought traps should be unexpected. This looks more like an invitation. It isn't a trap, Knock Knock. It's just another step to oblivion that awaits us all. Or a chance to return a thing that denied its own end to where it belongs. Hells no. We go and wipe the floor with this Vordekai and make soup out of this bird. I am sick of this mysterious master that is so afraid of us that he hides away in his lair and trembles shitless. Soon our leader will become a true king. Finally, he will measure to that old goblin king we smacked. Measure to goblin? That's some compliment. Are you happy? I couldn't even dream of seeing your coronation. Couldn't even dream of still being here with you. How can one compare pathetic savage to the lawful monarch? Well, I can't expect much from a beast like Goblin. Great beasts rough the land again. Everyone blames Mother again. But that is not her. She would have told me. Judging by your words, Lamashtu whispers her visions to you like Grotus whispers prophecies to me. Who would have thought that goblin will understand me better than anyone else? Whoever is to blame, I pity the simple folk that will become beasts' prey. They just began forgetting about that terrible bloom, and now it strikes again. Hmm. Maybe we should start drinking only rainwater again, uh, just as a preventative measure. Vindra is nasty, scary, should have stayed in her hole forever. But no, we just couldn't help ourselves. Who do you mean? Evindra? But she is a beauty. A poor thing nonetheless, though. The famous misperception of reality, ladies and gentlemen, in all its glory. I wonder what would happen if that Nareed would smell of lilies. Maybe our toothy friend would die from shock. Poor Faye. Not only was she hidden away, she had to deal with that horrible gardener as well. That long shake tournament was meh. Goblin holidays are another thing. The last one I visited, they brought a herald of Lamashtu, great beast. Ate all guests. I would like to participate. Need to train my aim. Pacify your beastling. I am fed up with the screeches of those talentless bards from the tournament. I need some silence. I saw the plains where this kind of fun was perceived not as a barbarity, but a natural thing. If I had a chance to visit those places again, I would gladly pass on it. Does anyone else want tea? It's growing quite chilly this evening. Thank you, Octavia. Your tea is magical. I mean, I don't mean you use magic to make it, although you might have, of course. I mean, you could have, but not necessarily. 
That is to say, thank you. No, thank you. I am quite content with the cold and the darkness. Oh, thank you, Octavia. This reminds me of our classes at the Academy of Arts. Some teachers would often make tea for students, and others sometimes even opened a bottle. <laughs> Svetlana and Oleg are a fine couple, though sometimes I feel he mistakes her for a child. Ah, he's simply protecting what's most important to him. They also have a fine trading post, though a bit neglected of recent. By my calculations, it will be a part of our barony. If we win, that is. You're right. And men like him are more common than you think. What might we find in a troll lair, do you think? Treasures, perhaps? Or abducted wretches stolen away from their people? Bitten off heads, torn off arms, and the like, the usual signs of trollish friendliness, but they might take us for their own, if we let you go first. A freaking pile of trolls, that's what. So get ready for a real slaughter. Oh, I can't wait to see. I hope we go first thing tomorrow. I still dream of Numeria sometimes. The places I've been to when, while I was still in chains. I hope I'll be rid of those memories someday. Chin up, Octavia. No matter what troubles your heart, no one must see you feeding those thoughts. Sometimes I'd give an arm to have those images burn from my mind. But then I think, is it really better to remember nothing at all? The people are complaining. They wish to see their ruler looking after their safety, rather than merely enjoying the comforts of rule. They shall have to steel themselves with patience. We shall protect the barony. But wars are not won overnight. Funny peoples. A chieftain sets an example, but if a tribe can't stand up for itself, what good is it? In other words, they desire to see that he is ruling to their pleasure, not his own. I've heard much about the lands to the east. Dunsward. That's what those lands are called, right? I'd like to go there once, to walk its endless expanse under an eternal sky. A land chock full of ancient ruins and crypts. You'd probably be bored out of your mind, though. There aren't any fancy trinkets or mirrors there, and the moist air would savage your tresses. Dunsward, it is unlikely you would enjoy it there. Those dusty and deserted plains hold little interest for a mage. A Dunswardish dwarf once decided to wee in a bucket and hide it. Despite his display having caused such dismay, he never felt guilt or denied it. I came up with that while I was at the academy. Too bad there are no dwarves in Dunsward to appreciate the peace. I can't stop thinking about that woman, the defaced sister. So fascinating, both she herself and her magic. I wish I could find out more from her. She fills me with unease. One who tells the truth has no need to hide their face. One who hides their face hides something else as well. To hide one's face and to reject one's very name, all in service to a higher power. Such a fascinating and dignified idea. I must think on this further. Oh, I don't know. She just scares me. I have little wish to see her again. I just keep thinking about the story we learned while we were searching for the flower. The story of the fallen goddess. I feel pity for her. It seems she was punished not for being evil, but for rebelling against rules set by someone else. Many poor souls lost their lives to the bloom. Direct your pity toward them. Even if she set out with good intentions, there's no honor in leveling her wrath upon the heads of the innocent. Those who rebel against the majority will always be punished. There is only one way to maintain one's freedom, to strike first. Normal thing for gods, always punishing and stabbing all of them. Lamashtu became goddess because she was better at it. My blood still boils when I remember what Tristian did at Vordekai's tomb. But still, the suffering on his face was so deep, so sincere. That's for sure. I don't know what to think. On the one hand, I want so badly just to swat him on the head. On the other hand, what if he had a good reason for doing what he did? Don't deceive yourself. He who betrays once will betray again. He's the only thing we ever talk about lately. Maybe he just needed more attention. <laughs> 
Poor Willis Gunderson. If only he knew where his thirst for adventure would lead him. The thirst for adventure is not inherently dangerous, but together with dilettantism and a rare lack of ingenuity. I often ponder this at night. How can you avoid trouble if you don't know what it might be? If it wasn't him, it would have been someone else. And if not, then Vordekai's role would have been served by plague, or war, or simple famine. Fearsome fool. Don't want to be like that, ever. Better stay dead for good. Even better, stay alive for good. I still can't believe it. You are now a king. And you have a whole kingdom. I wonder how this change will alter the fate of these lands. Well, if you need it to be explained, it will primarily change the nature of our relationship with our neighbours. We've become equal to them in terms of status, and thus we will be able to dictate certain terms during negotiations. It's about time. The barony's status didn't reflect our true power, and only restrained our growth. In so many regards, we already surpass both the foolish Aldori and the spineless Satova. News of a new kingdom will travel across Avistan quickly, through the tales of merchants and travelers, and in the reports of spies. Wars are fought between states, but it's the common people who suffer. The world isn't fair. And what's the answer? To overthrow the rulers and destroy the states? Complete anarchy? Do you really think that would mean fewer wars? Oh, wise words. This is why one must do all one can to become the one who commands, not the one who suffers under the yoke. Such is the order of the world. Either you win or you lose. Lady Chandra Murphy makes my skin crawl. What do you think about her? Her years have woven silver in her hair and wisdom in her mind. The way she talks suggests that freedom of speech is not exactly a prized commodity at Satova's court, and don't ask me to explain what freedom of speech is you wouldn't understand anyway. Ha! Huh. You should see what hundreds of years of political games and behind-the-scenes intrigue do to a soul. That's where the real monsters are born. The Stag Lord drew the short straw with his old man. It's better to be an orphan than be born in such a house. <laughs> there are no worse tyrants than cruel parents, and there wasn't a more powerless and unhappy creature than their child. I can never understand how seeing a helpless and fragile creature can inspire a wish to beat them rather than protect and help them. That is the cruelty of life. No one hurts us more than those who are closest to us. I'm not sure, but I heard they use moon radish to make homebrew or some kind of powder. No wonder Boken didn't tell us why he needed it. <laughs> more nonsense. Go there, bring that. When will the real feats begin? I can't wait to break someone's neck. The same ingredients might be used to prepare a healing potion. You shouldn't draw conclusions about those you don't know. What? But then, oh, right. Oleg and Svetlana are in on it too. Otherwise, why would they tolerate him? And the Stag Lord is just fighting for his corner of the black market. That's the story. A half-dead old smuggler. Bandits. And a criminal couple. That Remus, he's not as simple as he looks. I'm not sure why, but I just look at him and know something is wrong. I didn't know you had such keen eyesight. But yes, I believe you're right. At his age, fear of death drives many to madness. Although I cannot say that Remus truly understands what death really means. I saw something sad in his eyes. No, maybe it was something sly. Or was it mysterious? No, oh, don't listen to me. I'm just confused. When we were slaves of the Technic League, they taught us that the kobolds are descended from dragons. I still don't know whether or not it's true. I can't imagine that something as magnificent and menacing as a dragon could spawn something so small and ridiculous as a kobold. It's true. Kobolds still speak draconic. I was once even going to write a monograph about them, until some social climber from Absalom beat me to it. Blast him. 
A life devoid of higher goals leads only to the degeneration of the spirit. In their case, both the spirit and the body. That's the life. You own your castle, you own your lands, no one to tell you what to do. In fact, it's the opposite. You just open your mouth and a bunch of people come running to lick off your boots. This is great. Oh, it's impossible to find a moment of peace. There's no time to walk through the fields at night in the solace of silence. So many happenings and all of them requiring your attention. No, I would not like to be a ruler. The throne room's decorations were obviously crafted by a one-armed, one-eyed woodworker from a desolate Brevik village who's never seen anything he liked better than a roadside inn or a shopkeeper's hut. But other than that, not bad. Fortune has smiled upon the Baron. Power holds many pleasures for those who know how to wield it. I'm afraid of catching that rubbish. When you go near the sick, don't let them breathe on you. By the goddess. Are some people just incapable of compassion? We know to a certainty that it isn't the plague. The symptoms are different, and you might remember for future reference that even the plague is not contracted through breath. I am saddened by your stubbornness. You may clench at every grain of sand that passes through the hourglass, but you only increase your suffering. Let go of life with all its passions, and you will find the peace that your restless spirit longs for. I'm glad I didn't grow up among the barbarians. Look at them. Childhood in the tribe is almost worse than slavery. You talk about things you don't know anything about. But I don't have nothing to compare it with either. Let's leave the past in the past. Whatever has happened, it's given us what we have now. And we're all right now, aren't we? Childhood is the time of powerlessness, helplessness, and naivete. But the days of youth... I've never understood what drives fools to collect ancient trinkets, things belonging to cyclopes and such. An entertainment to those whose hearts pump sweetened milk instead of blood. I think it's exciting. The traces of creatures who roamed these lands under the same sun thousands of years ago. How did they live? What became of them? How did their cities fall to ruin? I have unraveled the secret of your magical powers. There are two stones in your head constantly striking each other, trying to spawn a single thought. But instead, they just make the sparks you emit from your fingers. The ruins of the ancient are pleasant to the eye, Raganga. For they remind us of the frailty of life. Those who left them are gone, and now we follow in their footsteps. Listen to the silence that remains. Does it not fill your spirit with calm? Prophecies, again. You want to control someone, tell them that they're chosen, and then tell them what to do. Nothing allows such complete power over another person as his vanity. That's exactly why it's dangerous to listen to someone for too long. They trick you and use you. There is great power in legends. However, it never occurred to me that it could be used for such purposes. That's right. Nobody should say you are chosen. Only you can decide. And then become. Well, ladies and gentlemen. Want to place any bets on whether our wet-nosed Seren Ray follower will ever put in an appearance? He hurt me so much, but I still hope we see him again. At least to hear his explanation. There is only one thing that is certain in this life. And I think you know what I'm talking about. He will hardly have the nerve to stand before us after what he's done. Anyway, you should never underestimate traitors. Irovetti had everything. Money, power, women. If he kept still and didn't stick out so much, he'd still be alive. Nothing kills a person as fast as greed and stupidity. <laughs> ha! A worthy epitaph for the departed. The wheel of fate keeps spinning. No one can stop it. Those at the top will be at the bottom, and so the other way around. Something tells me that the likes of him simply cannot keep still and not stick out. Did you hear? A watermill has broken down on the Shrike River. 
The miller woke up when his millstone stopped moving. He ran out and found a drowned troll, dressed in armor, stuck in the wheel. Buy a city drunkard a mug of beer. You'll hear all about it. I've learned of similar cases. Trolls stuck at the top of a city hall. A dead wyvern mysteriously appearing in a brewer's vat. Will wonders never cease? Obviously, this has something to do with teleportation. But how? Who? And where are these creatures being sent from? I once saw the air open up in a dead longshank fall out. Well, not completely dead. Knock, knock, had to finish him off. <laughs> Half orcs are lately flooding our barony. Any moment now, trolls will start swearing fealty to the baron. <laughs> Frightened of a little competition? Fear not. When it comes to tasteless foolery, even trolls can't keep up with you. Most of them. Castle is a loyal soul. This was the right decision. A most boring character. Even knowing I have eternity before me, I regret every moment spent in the company of that arrogant snob. Jod Kafkin is too hard on himself. He has a kind soul, and I thank Providence for our meeting. He has a very pretty smile. It's a shame we see it so rarely. It was lucky we met him. Suspicious, too. But he couldn't deceive a baby with that face. He's absolutely harmless, and hence entirely useless. His head looks like a potato. A potato head! <laughs> a gnome turning into a kobold to lead a whole tribe of these creatures sounds like one of the stories I heard from the caravanners in Kelish. This book is writing itself. What a marvelous narrative. Ah, you should hear the stories they tell over beer. Though, you're a little too young for them. <laughs> Stupid gnome. He used to be a disgusting little beast. And now, he still is. That poor troll still haunts my mind. The one who played subject of those experiments. Trolls bring so much evil, but still. I don't know if there is a goal righteous enough to justify torture. What if these experiments led a wizard, for instance, to discover a cure for the mortally wounded? Life is not so simple, my friend. That's base emotion talking. Better to heed the voice of reason, and remember that the wizard was breaking no laws and had a good cause. Thus he cannot be convicted. Something tells me it wasn't about the cause, but the pleasure he got from the process. <laughs> this world is full of wonderful things. Wonderful places and wonderful people. I'm grateful for all I can learn. Tristian, I'm so glad you're with us. I'd hate to think what might have happened if our Baron hadn't come to your aid back at the temple. This world is filled with darkness and pain. But the ways that complex living things fall and decay back into nothingness, this amazes me as well. Watching it happen... I sense true wonder. So much suffering. I can't bear to see them. You haven't been yourself lately, Tristian. Stop punishing yourself. You do all you can. Surely you know this. Your burden is heavy. To attempt to save someone, it fail. I know well that feeling. The news about these monsters is troubling. We must... Find the root cause of this invasion as soon as possible. There's a good fight ahead of us. We should be glad instead of whining. These lands are full of danger, and monsters are no rarity here. Putting an end to them will provide a fair challenge. I share Tristian's apprehension, friends. Anything could have driven them from the woods. Assuming they even came from the woods, of course. So much evil. So much evil caused by a single flower. I wish I could find whoever made it, and pluck them off at the stem. You seem not yourself since we return. Gather your courage, Tristian. We shall need it. And yet the flower is only a tool. But what evil must seethe in the heart of the one who planned all this? The fate of Varnhold haunts me. I pray its people are unharmed. My prayers fly with yours. Been thinking about those people too. Don't want it to end as it did with my village. Would that we can help. 
Alas, these are the stolen lands. Time and again, people disappear here without a trace. Whole groups, and even whole settlements. I don't envy that serenray of yours. You pray so much, her head must hurt. <laughs> I am so grateful to fate for giving me a chance to repent. Repent? Why do you imagine treachery is something that can be repented? Everyone makes mistakes sometimes, Tristian. But not everyone is ready to accept and try to fix their mistakes. You should thank our leader for not letting me do all I'm supposed to do by the laws of the tribe. I understand how difficult it is to forgive me and accept me into your circle again. I am not asking or expecting this from you. And right. Now you better keep quiet while you're still alive. I've been wondering why you did what you did. It's an understatement to say that we were all stunned. You can't undo what you've done, but still, you know, I'm glad you're back with us. It's easier to fix a broken egg than return the trust you've lost. But time can do strange things. Nah, don't worry. You showed me that if I stab someone in the back, they'll let me back in. Ah, uh, long shanks and half shanks. <laughs> so gullible. You've become a king. Now your feats will surely ring around the world. My congratulations. It is a well-deserved reward. Self-praise is unseemly. But still, what a nice coronation ceremony we held, don't you think? And the feast afterwards. Nice lies, traitor. Congratulations, you somehow made it. No matter how hard I tried to help our enemies and get everyone killed. Is it a reward? Or a burden. This rushlight tournament is such a wonderful idea. I'm so amazed, ravished by the celebrations people hold. A Deva who has looked upon the gods with his own eyes and traveled freely between the plains is ravished by the sight of a drunken crowd. Delightful. I still can't believe you're a real Deva. That's so interesting. How mysterious it all is, and what happens there, beyond the boundary of death? I have no idea what such a neatly dressed fellow like yourself could find so interesting about a bunch of drunken mugs at a festival. Such sad, deserted lands. Lawlessness always leads to desolation and emptiness. I wouldn't know. Galt is no more orderly, but it's nowhere near as desolate. Trust me. Law and order can be twisted into the service of evil, and spawn even more cruelty and suffering. Law and freedom balance each other like two ends of the scales. Both can lead to evil, unless tempered with compassion. Unbelievable! A war between kobolds and mites. You can't read about that in a book. <laughs> I guess you haven't spent much time in libraries. There is one Kadiran novel, on the whole rather frivolous, I must say, where kobolds and mites not only fight, but hmm, do a few other things as well. It's sad to see their hundred-year peace broken over such a trifle, but there's nothing to be done. Nature didn't bless either of them with much wit. It was as good as a circus when they started tearing out each other's throats. Ah, mmm. So small, but full of spit and rage. I don't know if it's true, but have you heard what the local villagers say about a dragon in these woods? It would make a fine hunting trophy. No, not dragon. There are no dragons in these lands. Could be a wyvern. It would surely be a fine trophy indeed, if trophies could be forged of empty gossip. If a real dragon lived anywhere nearby, everyone would learn of it in a most unpleasant manner. Just thinking about it, I'm ready to fight. Why are we babbling here? It's time we go and tear off that lizard's wings. Trolls usually treat kobolds like annoying moths. I wonder what that Tartuccio could have told them. In the end, he's a magician. Magic trickery can make an unforgettable impression on the uneducated barbarian mind. Whatever it is, an alliance like this is bad news for everyone else. Maybe they just like the color purple. Or was he able to offer them something they truly desire? Or perhaps he's the first kobold clever enough to learn the language of the giants? I've met a lot of people, fought side by side with many of them. The best allies in the stolen lands are the steadfast Maivani. They're always reliable, 
unlike Brevin's. Brevin families specialize in scheming and treachery. It would seem even commoners of those parts possess the same dishonest instincts as their rulers. Southerners are all the same. Cowards with no pride or courage. There's only one whose word you can always trust. Yourself. How could it be possible? Monsters appearing from the inside a person, tearing the poor soul apart. Every monster we slay is one more life we fail to save. Welcome to real life. This is how it really looks on the ground, unlike the pages of heroic legends or the songs of bards. The eyes of those poor people who recognized what was about to happen. They shall haunt me in my nightmares. We must find a way to stop this madness. This terrible tragedy only brings into relief something we try to forget every day. Every wasted hour costs someone their life. Every moment someone reaches out to a passersby, begging for salvation and dying of unkindness. I can't stop thinking about the face of that poor woman we found in the Cyclops' tomb. A defaced sister indeed. Who could have done that to her? A perverse religious practice of some fanatic cult. Priests of many dark religions self-mutilate voluntarily. Doesn't matter much now anyway. You don't need a face to lay in a grave. The world is full of such terrors. Life is cruel. What is more surprising is the way you cling to it. At first I thought the bloom just another wonder of nature which causes evil unwillingly, like poisonous plants or droughts and storms. But now I know there's a wicked will at the root of all this. As should have been expected, behind great disasters there's often someone's wicked will. Great evil. Innocent victims. This must never be forgiven and forgotten. How horrible. How could anyone be capable of such things? I will never understand what drives such monsters. How can their minds and souls become so twisted? I never expected this from Tristian. But now he's shown his true colors. I'd hunt down the rat and choke him. But I don't want to get my hands dirty. But how did he come to this? Why did he betray us? I had no idea. Aren't you the least bit interested? Well, I had an idea. I always thought and often said that there was something wrong with him, and I was right. As expected, the Kelids know nothing about strategy and maneuvers. However, one can't deny they possess a certain resourcefulness and tactical ingenuity. Animal craftiness. Not more than that. Don't be fooled. They're counting on their opponent taking them for idiots. Underestimating them is a mistake you only do once. It's all about resolution and improvisation. You've got something to learn from them here. <laughs> I always knew Irovetti wasn't fit to be a king. Well, maybe this is our chance to correct history's mistake. <laughs> How nicely put. Where's my notebook? Why not? We've already tried putting someone on a throne. Now let's try throwing someone off of one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he who searches for fairness in this world only walks the path of disappointment. And Laura Nusky's camp was more a thieves' nest than a general's headquarters. They stood no chance. Ha! As if anyone could stand a chance against us. Similarities attract. But they received such terrible orders. Take everything and leave nothing behind but scorched earth. The virtues of a noble chevalier are entirely foreign to Celebida. He kept inviting me on a date so persistently, and behaved as though he was deaf to my objections. Just say that you will meet him in some quiet place, and I'll show up instead of you. I will give him more than he ever bargained for. Oh, I should talk to him. About the void and the ashes and the end of all that exists. About the pointlessness of life. And he will see that spoiling the lives of others is doubly pointless. <laughs> Some find it difficult to own defeat and stand back, even when everyone around can see it's a lost cause. <laughs> My cape is all worn out. Gotta catch a bear. A big one's hide would fit me just right. Some food would be nice. <laughs> and some booze. When I get to a tavern... 
I'll lock myself inside and won't come out until all the barrels are empty. Hey, dwarf. You ever miss your home and your kin? Sounds from what you said, your kin is even more crap than mine. Why ask if you know the answer? Would you like to talk to your family? I could raise their souls as a favor. I won't deal with you. Even their wolf sees your meat as carrion. Lindsay, why don't you write a story about us all, huh? Like, they lived happily ever after and died together on the same day. On the battlefield, among numerous corpses of their enemies. I'm sorry, Octavia, but I can't imagine any one of our team old sitting by a fire and surrounded by great-grandchildren. If you'd remained a paladin, you would have gained many powers. You could heal wounds, banish the undead. No offense, but the powers a deity grants in return for your service is like a cape your master doesn't need and casts aside for you. I might not be able to claim much, but I owe all my abilities to myself only. No one is going to take them away for disobeying. To die in battle is a true honor. Death comes to us all. The real question is how we live, with honor or with shame. Once I sought death, no more. Something has changed. There is no better death than death in battle. I confess, I do not understand that sentiment. Death means pain and separation from loved ones. Why should someone feel good about it? Well, it might be an honor for the dead person, but it still makes me sad. <clears throat> I feel like I'm ready to drop. I'm sorry we can't do anything for you right now. Maybe we'll find you some help in town. Such a familiar feeling. Wait, were you speaking of bodily suffering? For a moment I thought you meant your haggard soul. My hide is intact, but I feel like crap. Don't forget to call me if you decide you're ready to die. I wouldn't want to miss a show like that. Quite some stamina for a creature so short-lived. Maybe ate something? Knock Knock once ate a fish he kept in Earth for a week, nearly sick to death. I'm dog-tired. I didn't know you could ever get tired. This is a rare sight indeed. I know you won't heed my advice, Amiri, but you really must take care of yourself. Everyone has limits. I'm so tired, just dead on my feet. You are stronger than most. Others would fall long before you. This longsome journey depleted my strength. It's time to lay our heads. The beasts of the night shall not disturb your peace, my friends, said the tireless warrior. This is an ominous place. Let us keep together, friends. More clerical whining. I've survived alone in worse places than this. Fine by me. I love it when we sit together by the fire. And I always worry when one of us wanders off somewhere all by himself. Don't go too far. This place can be dangerous. Wise words. Unity feeds our strength. By the gods, what a coward. Dawnflower. Don't turn your gaze from me. I need your power to help those who suffer. I like to listen when you pray. A pure voice and a pure soul. You wasted all your prayers again? Good. Now you'll need to learn how to use weapons properly. The fire of my prayers has fallen to embers. I address my plea to you. Dawnflower, grant me the strength to serve you. All your prayers are always about serving and helping others. This brings to my mind many things. I think upon those things that separate sincerity and vanity. Grotus calls me. I feel his pale glow upon my face. Your faith is strange, Dwarf. Strange and confusing to me. So why don't you rush to meet your master? If you love him so much, then what's stopping you? I grow closer to my god than ever. A moment more, and I shall see his image looking down upon the boneyard. There now, let me help you this time. Grotus can wait. Did you hear that? Sounded like someone prowling about near the campsite. But perhaps I'm just hearing things. 
It's our fault we forewent the proper precautions and didn't conceal the camp. If we really are in danger, you'd better prepare one of your spells. I think I heard someone over there. Listen, can you hear it? No? Strange. If this is a false alarm, I'll give you a good punch, I'm telling you. You keep hearing and seeing things. When Torak cursed you, is it possible that he accidentally hit you on the head with his axe? If my own servants were so careless in setting camp... She deliberately taunts you. Pay her no heed. When this is over, I'll twist your head off. If I can wait that long. You can't even conceal a camp. What good are you at all, then? There are no servants and no masters here. Damn it all, if you want something, you can do it yourself. Uh, one day I will just walk up to that arrogant, snobbish waif and give her such a slap upside her head. I must sleep, and don't you dare wake me up, even if my clothes suddenly catch fire. This will not do, Sir Gnome. You may need to stay on guard. Just don't sleep too soundly. Great! But while the buffoon is away, who will sit here with a smug face and order people around? I'll do it if you like. I suppose I shall bid you good night and depart your enlightened company. I need some sleep. I remember last time. You snored so loudly no one but you could sleep at all. Oh, I'd better get to sleep before he does. How is it that some gnomes snore louder than orcs? Peace, at last. I see our travels have taught us nothing at all. Failing to conceal your camp is a novice's error. Quit your whining. You was the first who planted your sorry ass by the fire, so shut your mouth closed. I think it's best to stay put and don't touch anything. Unless you wish to see me accidentally bring down every single tent. Tonight we'll drown if even the slightest rain picks up. Oh, that's if a light breeze doesn't blow our tents away first. It's too late for regret now. We should have concealed the camp while we were setting up. Why, look at that. Our Lord Alchemist here is scared of monsters. Unprepared to meet a wyvern face to face? <laughs> have no fear. We'll protect you. Since none of you is going hunting, let's buy some decent rations next time. I've grown sick of this muck. Oh, poor little Juby. His mean companions won't feed him. No one understands how exceptional he is. If only he could, oh, I don't know, lift up his saggy butt and go hunting for himself? There's nothing better than fresh meat cooked by an experienced chef. So, instead of fresh game, we'll have dry rations for lunch again. If you're all too lazy to fetch us some decent meat, at least you could follow the example of the dwarves. They add sausage and dried meat to every ration. Right. Wow, did you really just say something useful? Something that don't make people want to punch you in the nose? Ha! <laughs> That's new. Field rations sap all my inspiration. You want real poetry? Then give me real food. Why is everyone so glum? As if long shanks and half shanks don't kick it as much as goblins. You are a strange creature, Knock Knock. You don't cling to your life, and you don't weep for the dead. It seems that you, unknowingly, attain the wisdom of Grotus's teaching. How can somebody be so nasty? Nasty, stupid, senseless scoundrel! It disgusts me to even share the same bonfire with you! Once we get to your stinky city, we'll find five more adventurers, instead of dead ones. Good you've mentioned that. Means you won't cover my back. Better to know beforehand. Aren't you even a little bit sad about the Fallen? Even a teeny tiny bit? I'll manage anyway. Knock Knock is a hero. Knock Knock can. Just look at this gnat. Barely alive and still tries to be a hero. <laughs> That's the spirit. Even goblins are braver than some southern warriors. I am fine. Don't worry. Knock Knock will protect you anyway. I can't afford you to get hurt because of your boldness. 
So try to keep behind our backs until you feel better. Please. I would be able to make an entertaining little zombie when this creature perishes. I doubt we'll need to wait long. I don't worry about beasts. I will run away while they eat all of you. I promise you won't get too far. Just try and you'll get a lightning bolt in your hind. We'll manage. Then I will track you. Knock knock is sly. Knock knock is fast. Knock knock will flee if beast attacks. At least you don't try to pretend that you value our lives. Perfect. The farther, the better for all of us. Ah, it's like they aim at me specifically when they're sharing their disgusting muck. I know you don't like it when I say this, but perhaps you'll let me examine you? Save your strength. Tomorrow we move. I'm feeling sick. Like I drank a barrel of trollish homebrew all by myself. Oof, this too shall pass. Take an early night, warrior. You should get some sleep. Yeah. I haven't done that much in quite a while. Don't worry about him. He's a big boy. He can take care of himself. And yet, so many have it worse than we. I feel like I've been carrying bricks all day. And I thought I'd never be a slave again. <laughs> you don't say. But all the beautiful scenery, exciting events, the people we meet, all this is more than enough reward for our struggles. Right, friends? On such days, I'm glad the dead feel nothing, including fatigue. Yeah. <laughs> I've never spent a night in such a hellhole. Even when Octavia and I were on the run from the Technic League. <laughs> what, you want a feather bed? Did you see the places I sleeped in? I don't think I would choose to camp here, but the Baron decided we should. No doubt he had his reasons. An atmospheric place. I wouldn't recommend it to my friends, though. <laughs> I don't think I would choose to camp here, but the Baroness decided we should. No doubt she has her reasons. I have no quarrel with dirt and damp, but keep your weapons close tonight. In times like this, I imagine that I am far, far away, or that my friends are with me. And what could be better than that? You should have seen where our camp was. So cozy. Smells there strong. Lots of us always sleep because of fumes. It's time to lay down our heads and get some rest. Exhaustion is good for meditation. When the body is weak, the soul is more attuned. I recommend you to start reading before you go to sleep. And for the sake of all the gods of Galarian, choose some serious reading. I'm completely exhausted. It's good we can rest while our friends watch the camp. I've no idea how you manage. Wearing that heavy armor all day, and you always walk in front. You get tired so fast. That's because you long shanks. You spend too much strength to move those big, long legs of yours. Oh, today is the special day for you. One year older, one step closer to the end of all the vanity and trouble. You have my Deepest congratulations. The thought that you approach the boneyard must be a relief. I'd like to make a toast. A toast to our leader and patron. May you enjoy all life's brightest pleasures in your many years to come. And may the weaklings and the rabble envy you, as they always do their superiors. It's a special day for a special person. You know I wouldn't be hanging around someone unworthy, right? You've already achieved more than most dare dream of. Your birth date is enshrined in the Chronicles, and some poor scholar somewhere will have to memorize it if he wants to pass his Northern Avistan history exam. So, happy birthday, your highness. Be well, and don't forget to update those Chronicles with one or two heroic deeds each year. It's today, right? I made a note so I won't forget, but then I forgot where I put the note. Oh, here it is. Our king has a very special day today. I wish you many new adventures and exciting events, because what could be better than adventures? Happy birthday. Knock, knock, the big hero wants a word. I know what the day is. It's the day when little heroes spawn into world. 
I wish you good treasures and all the tasty things to eat and some scary monsters to slice. That's how one hero honors another hero. Am I to be the first to say happy birthday to our king? Be happy, follow your dreams, and inspire us to follow ours. I'm so glad I met you, so we can share this journey together. Happy birthday. Finally, some leisure time. We can celebrate our leader's birthday. You know I'm no good at speeches. All I can say is, be happy and inspire the people who follow you. May the light of Serenray guide your way.